Matthew Capucci now. He's a meteorologist with the Washington Post. Matthew, we just heard in that report that New Orleans basically blacked out as Hurricane Ida has now flooded the state. Can you describe the characteristics of this storm? What makes it so potent? And how did it develop from just a stormy situation to something that is being described as, described as historically catastrophic within a matter of days? So this storm did something called rapid intensification, meaning it rapidly intensified about 35 miles per hour or more in 24 hours. That's the kind of threshold, but this thing tripled that for a little while, and so it went from a category two to borderline category five in just about 12 hours time overnight, and eventually it just roared ashore on Sunday with horrible force. Gusts to about 155 miles per hour, so close to 240 kilometers per hour, which was incredible. The good news, though, if there was any good news, this was kind of a more compact system, a little more narrow than Katrina 16 years ago, and so it didn't have quite the same storm surge that Katrina did. That said, very heavy rainfall, destructive winds, and as you mentioned, all of New Orleans is without power. Now, that power issue is a big problem because they also got about 10 inches, 25 centimeters worth of rainfall that all went into the city, was trapped by the levees, and so now they can't really pump it out. So they got a flash flood emergency, not from storm surge, but freshwater flooding. All that in an area that was seeing wind damage and a beleaguered town to begin with is a, a very challenging recipe for a, a long, long uh, recovery mission. And the storm developed so quickly, there wasn't time for people to evacuate. So what sort of challenge does that pose? See, that's one thing that, uh, as a meteorologist, I actually disagree with, in that we had the best darn forecast you will ever possibly have for weather. We knew about four days out that Louisiana could be seriously impacted. We knew about two days out, maybe two and a half days, this could be a high-end hurricane. The National Hurricane Center issued phenomenal tracks that in the end, we're within 50 miles of where the storm actually went. Ultimately, we gave as much warning as we possibly could, and this was the best science that you'll ever get. The issue was largely not that they couldn't evacuate, not that they, you know, they, they didn't have the resources to. It was more that, at that point, they didn't have the confidence levels to. And so, well, yes, uh, it would have been challenging to evacuate in two and a half days. They absolutely could have done it. It's more using meteorologists as scapegoat. So what is the storm's track now, post-Louisiana? What's in store for the next few days, Matthew? So right now, it's a waterlogged tropical storm. It's moving through deep south. It has a significant rainfall rates, upwards of about five centimeters per hour in some places. So crazy amount of rainfall. Moving through Mississippi, heading towards the Tennessee Valley, eventually the Ohio Valley, and towards the Mid-Atlantic. I'm here in Washington, D.C. We could see upwards about uh, eight centimeters worth of rainfall, and D.C. has already had a very wet month with upwards of half a foot more rain than we normally get, so that will likely cause flash flooding issues. I think the wind risk is dying with this, but flash flooding for a number of people and the chance of a couple tornadoes. Oftentimes, these storms, when they spin down, produce tornadoes, so we'll have to watch that pretty closely. All right, Matthew Capucci, always great to have you with us. Matthew is a meteorologist with The Washington Post.